people find value in different things. You know, where do we find people value? What makes someone valuable? And I think Psalm 139 really speaks to that. So, uh, would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day that you've given to us. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that are ours through you. We especially thank you, Lord, for your love, for making us, for creating us, and for redeeming us. Lord, now as we look at your word through Psalm 139, uh, we ask that it reach our hearts and help us to see the value we have because you created us. This, Lord, we bring to in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so I am not an art expert, but sometimes I find art fascinating, and sometimes I work on a little bit of art. So I've got my own little piece of art that I did, and see what you guys think of it. How do you guys like that? Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? I know it seems kind of simple, um, but you know, for a colorblind guy. That's pretty darn good. So I'm going to put this up here so you guys can just be mesmerized by it. So, but the question is, what is the value of my art? What do you think that art is worth? Priceless. You think so? You think so? All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to look at the value of my art, which I made yesterday. Um, eight is generous. Whoever said eight, uh, you're cool. it's still generous. Um, so let's look at the value of my art that I made. All right, so uh, we're going to look at that's my art piece there. And uh, I call it a square on a white background because when I put it into the presentation, it went underneath and said, a square on a white background. So that's what I called it. Uh, Aaron Witt is me. That's the artist. I created it in 2023. The value of my art is $6.92. Uh, so that's pretty good. So, I took some other art and wanted to see how it compared to other art that seemed usually relatively simple or something that somebody could do, like I did. So, let's start with this one. Ooh, how do you like that one? All right. So, that is white on white. The artist is uh, Kazimir Melovich. He created it in 1918. What do you think the value of that art is? $60 million. I, I am not lying. I'm, all these are real pieces of art, and this is the value of what they last sold for. So that's this is true. So white on white, and it is worth $60 million. That's the value. All right. Isn't that amazing? I mean, how many of you have ever done that before? On a chalkboard, yeah. It's like, oh, I've got a chalkboard. I have. Let's see how much of the chalkboard we can fill up, all right? So this particular piece of art is actually, it's not called untitled, it's just untitled. Uh, Cy Twombly made it in 1970. What do you think the value on this one is? $269.9 million. Nice. People have a lot of money to spend. All right, here's one more. Here's another one. All right. All right, this one is called Blackfire One, which is a cool name, uh, made by Barnett Newman in 1961. And uh, still, I think I could probably come up with that. $84.2 million. All right, so I got one more piece of art for you that I want to show you, and we're going to look at it, and we're going to see, um, now this one's actually kind of pretty, um, you know, I mean, it's just got some more color to it, and things like that, you know, but, I mean, have you guys ever done one of those paintings, where you just kind of take and fling stuff at the, you know, so, so that is uh, called Number 5 by Jackson Pollock. Uh, created in 1948, and the value is $140 million. So, kind of crazy, right? Crazy. So, so let me do a quick summary, all right? So, we have all these pieces of art, and then we have my piece of art. And for whatever reason, these are worth millions and millions of dollars, and mine is worth $6.92. Um, so here's my question though. 
Why would all these pieces of art be worth millions and mine's worth less than seven bucks? Why is that that old? And even in 15, 20, 30 years, I still don't think mine's going to be worth $60 million. Because they were made by someone famous. Because they were made by a famous artist. And that's why they have so much value. And it's kind of crazy to look at some of those. Because you think, I can do scribbles on a chalkboard, but I doubt anybody's going to give me, you know, $140 million or $84.6 billion. So, I want to look at one more piece of art. So keep this in mind. Okay, keep this whole thing in mind. That the reason that those other paintings were worth so much money is because of the artist that made them. All right, here's one more piece of art. How do you like that piece of art? Yeah. Well, I took that yeah. yesterday after I changed your oil on my teeth. And then went and sat in front of my old beat-up car. Um, so the title of this one is Aaron. The uh, artist is God. It was created in 1972. And um, let's see, if you consider like all my life insurance I have, Kind of the, let's see, I've got a nice Jeep, I've got an old beat up bug, I have a corgi, um, that's pretty awesome. So, what do you suppose my full value is? Priceless. My value is priceless. Each and every one of us is sharing the same artist. Each and every one of us was made by God. The words of Psalm 139 not only remind us that God is our artist, but that each of us is his priceless creation. And that's the thing we have to remember as we look at Psalm 139. So I'm going to start it off here. Uh, For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, O Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So, again, God is the one who created you. Now, I'm not going to go into biology and all that stuff, because you're a bunch of junior high boys and here you go crazy on me, but in the whole process of things, I can tell you each of you is more than one in a million. The chances of things working out for your DNA makeup to be exactly who you are, God put that all together. God is the one who created you. God is the one who made you who you are. And you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So it's not just, okay, this is not fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, it was kind of fearfully made because I was doing it last minute, but I cut out a square, took some double dyed of tape, and stuck it on canvas. Didn't take much to make it, but God made you fearfully and wonderfully made. And then Psalm 139 continues to say, wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. So we talk about God's works. What kind of things has God done? Well, the biggest thing I look at is creation shows us the great wonder of God's work, doesn't it? I mean, think about creation and how things work. I mean, look up at the stars at night. God made that. Think of the most beautiful place you can think of. I love the mountains. Some people like the beaches. Anything else, but all the wonderful things God has done. And all of God's creation. And when God got done making everything, what did he say it was? God said it was good. You know what good means to God? Good in God's term means perfect. Because Jesus one time, somebody asked him, called him good teacher, and he said, who alone is good but God? God is perfect. God's creation was was perfect. God has made some really cool stuff. You look at... uh, the the things in the ocean, all the animals God's made. God's creation is awesome. God's works are wonderful. The way this whole world works, the way everything in our life works, is because of God's work. And our soul, deep down, we know how awesome that is. Well, if the rest of God's creation is wonderful, so are each of you. Because the one thing when God made people that he didn't do with anything else is he made them in their image. He gave us a soul. God made us like him. Not that we can do the miracles that God does. Not like that. 
but God made us like him, gave us a soul so that we could spend forever with him. So this is a little bit longer one. So it says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. So God made you exactly who he wanted you to be. And sometimes we get frustrated with that, right? Sometimes we wish, I wish I had more talents like this person. I wish I had more of this. I wish my hair wasn't so crazy sometimes. You know, I wish my nose was a little bit different. I wish I didn't struggle so much with doing math or science or school. I wish that the people could understand me better. But God understands you. God knows you. God made you exactly who he wanted you to be. See, God knows everything about you. And that's what I talk about, seeing in the hidden places. God knows more about you than you know about yourself. Um, in one another passage, it says that, that all the hairs on your head are numbered. How many of you actually know how many hairs are on your head? I mean, seriously. Try to count them. You, you lose track real quick. Now, there's some, some guys that kind of, you know, God helps them with that. But still. Um, but God knows everything about us. He loves what he made. God loves all of his creation and all of us being a part of his creation. God looks at you and he loves what he made. Your talents, your gifts, even the things you might think are flaws, God says, no, no, no. This is what makes you, you. This is what makes you special. This is what makes you my child. Because that's what God did when he created us. That's why we call him God the Father. Because we are his children. And he loves us dearly. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum. So what does God think? What does God think of us? Well, we saw it. God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God says, you are my son. You are my daughter. You see, what God thinks is the only thing that really matters. All too often we listen to everything coming around us. Maybe something people tell us, another person tells us, maybe even things we tell ourselves, maybe even what we see from the world around us that says, ah, oh, you should be more this way, people should be this way, people should be this way. Well, if a person's this way, there's something not right with them. That's what it says. But the only person we should ever listen to is God. And God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, God thinks you're so important, and God thinks you're so special, that he would give up his life for you. So here's a little bit of the reality of it. Truth is, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. None of you are perfect. We all make mistakes. God has these Ten Commandments for us that he wants us to live by. And if we could all live according to the Ten Commandments... How much better would this world be if we all lived according to the Ten Commandments, or at least tried? It would be a lot better. But we don't. We mess up. None of us are perfect. And because we're not perfect, we can't save ourselves. We can't make up for our sins. To be able to make up for your sins would mean that you'd have to be perfect, and if you were perfect, you wouldn't have any sins to make up for. But God knew that. See, God loves you. God wanted to spend an eternity. <clears throat> That's how much God loves us. He doesn't want us just to spend some time here. He doesn't say, I want you to enjoy your, you know, how many of years you have on earth. He says, I want you to spend an eternity with me. And that's exactly why God sent Jesus to live, to die on the cross, and then to rise from the dead. Because through that, and through that love that God gives us, we get to spend an eternity through him. Because Jesus came to earth. Now that's pretty cool in itself. And that shows how much he loves us. Because Jesus was up in the glories of heaven. 
beginning of John tells us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everything was created through Him. Jesus was there during creation. He was a part of creation, and yet He left the glories of heaven to come down to earth, to come down and suffer the same things that we do, to go have the same trials, the same problems. He was sad. He was happy. He got hungry. He felt grief. He felt stressed out. But he did that for us because he loves us that much that he would do that for us. And of course, the most popular verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God doesn't want us to suffer for our sins. Instead, God wants us to spend an eternity This is something else God says about you. This isn't Psalm 139. But I think it's an important thing to remember. God says this about you and to you. But now, thus says the Lord, you created you, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Did you catch that? Did you catch what God says about you? God says, I have called you by name. Your parents probably had to think about what they would name you, but God knew what you were going to be named. Way before your parents ever did. God knows your name, and he redeemed you. He not only created you, he also redeemed you. And that's what Jesus did. He redeemed us because that is how important we are to God. I couldn't call you all by name. But if Jesus came down here, he would call each and every one of you by name. Now, how would that make you feel? How cool would it be that he knows you and loves you enough that he could call you each by name? I'm terrible at names. But God knows that. He knows that about you. Every little part about you. So here's the, the big point I want to be making known from this. I have no idea how much time I have. Ten minutes? Okay, slow down. Your value. Here's the thing. Your value is determined by God. God is the one that sets your value. Why? Well, for a number of reasons. You think about the art we had. One, the value of the art was, one, determined by the artist because they might have been a famous person, but who else kind of determined who that art was, how much that art was worth? The person that paid for it, right? Somebody had to pay for that art. You know, how do we know the one was worth $140 million? Because that's what it sold at at auction in like 2018. That's why I put that value on there, because somebody said, this is worth $140, $140 million. God made you, so as his artist, he is the most popular artist, by the way, because nobody can top what he does. So being God, art, that makes you priceless. And by giving up his son to die for you, God says, I'm going to give up my life, and I'm going to give something great. So God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God created you, and he redeemed you. You are his child and you belong to him. God bought you back. Not with $140 million or $200 million. God bought you back with the precious blood of Christ. Something else that is priceless. So if God used something to buy you that was priceless, then that makes you priceless. Don't let others determine your value. And I know that's hard. Especially at your age, there are all kinds of things going on. People say mean things. Sometimes they just want to get attention. Um, I see all the time working with confirmation kids, working with kids that are junior high, even high school. And they're great kids. But for whatever reason, sometimes they get together and they say dumb things. And especially as we have, you know, all our cell phone stuff today. People don't determine your value. As a matter of fact, I don't even want you to determine your own value because sometimes we diminish our own value. 
Maybe we've done something we feel really bad about. Maybe we don't like the way we look. Maybe the way we don't like the way we do things. Maybe we don't think we're smart enough. All those things I talked about before. You think I'm not worth as much as other people. Don't do that to yourself. So don't let others determine your value. Don't determine your own value. Your value is determined by God, and he says you are what? Each one of you is priceless to God. So let's go back to this guy. So, Aaron, God, 1972, he's priceless. I want to make sure that that's put in that picture. And now I want you to do it with your turn. So, if you happen to have your phone with you, this is the one of the very few times I'll actually let you take the phone out. Or do it later, either way. But sometime, I want you to take out your phone and take a selfie of yourself. And then look at that. You know what the hard part's going to be? They lost, didn't they? It's your turn. So take a selfie of yourself and then look at it. And maybe that's uncomfortable because sometimes we don't like clicking. Who likes to look at pictures of themselves sometimes? Who likes to listen to your own voice on a recording? Most of us don't like that. We might look at that, but when you look at that, do your own thing. Do your own thing like I did. Put your photo there, all right? Your name, know that God is your artist whenever you hear you were born, and know that you are priceless. Now, when I was a kid, we didn't have selfies. We wanted to do selfies. We had to point the camera at ourselves and take pictures, and then we had to wait like a week for them to develop before they came back, and then we'd know if it turned out or not. So, but I know with selfies, and I've done it before, when you're done, you can always put words underneath your name. So even though I couldn't take a selfie of myself, we do need a junior high kid that I want on there. So here's a junior high kid for you. I think that was my eighth grade year. I was half the man I am now, literally. Um, that was me in the eighth grade, spiky hair, because I had no idea what to do with my hair. Uh, once I hit college, I did do the mullet for a little bit, so, you know, that was pretty, I kind of rocked the mullet. But the thing is, I can sometimes look at some of these pictures like, oh my gosh, I was such a goof, I'm glad I can grow a beard and stuff now. Um, but still, at that point in time, I was priceless. So that's what I want all of you to do. Take a picture of yourself, take a selfie, and then put the words underneath it, put the words priceless. And I want you to save that in your phone. And if you want to, you can even make it your front page for a while, but I want you to be able to look at yourself and see and know that you are priceless. For you four, my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, O God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Remember those words. Those are some of my favorite Bible words ever. Knowing that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So just remember these points. Leave today is what I want you to remember. One, God is your artist. God made you. God created you. You are actually God's masterpiece. You're not just a work of art. You're an actual masterpiece. A beautiful, wonderful masterpiece. And you are priceless. Not only because God is your artist, but because God paid for you with something priceless. Because you are worth it. Every one of you is worth it. And I'm worth it. So, would you guys close with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you again for this day and this time together to talk about your words, especially as you talk about our values. In Psalm 139, Lord, help us to remember that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by you, that you're our artist, that we are your masterpiece, that we are priceless to you. Thank you for sending us Jesus so that he might pay for us and see our value. Lord, help us to see our value, not what other people say, not even what we say about ourselves, but about what you say about us. And help us, Lord, see 
that we are priceless in your sight. It is in Jesus' name we pray this.